God. It's better than the alternative. It's better than the alternative. Can you say amen? I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. My God, that ought to be your testimony. Come on now. Hallelujah. You got your Bibles with you. Let's go to Genesis. I'll make it easy for you this morning. Let's go to Genesis. I'll even make it real easy. Let's go to the first chapter. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. That's right past the index. A table of contents. Hallelujah. If you would, let's stand together this morning. Genesis chapter 1 in verse 26 and 27. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he male and female created he them. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you. We thank you so much for your covenant. That we are covenant people of a covenant God. And we thank you, Lord God, that your covenant with us is sealed in blood. All covenants were made through blood, but the covenant that we're under is sealed in the precious blood of Jesus without a, as a lamb without spot and without blemish. Father, we ask this morning for the Holy Ghost of God to do as you sent him to do, to convict and reprove of sin and of righteousness and judgment to come this morning, Father. Lord, as we want to be more in tune and more in likeness of your image, Father. Lord, let our hearts be sensitive. Let our spirits be in tune with what you would have us to understand of your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You know, this morning, I, I just want to say this. I, I thought all week long I was going to be preaching from Acts the 20th chapter. I was going to be preaching to you about Eutychus who fell out of the window and died. But as the week went on, as I meditated upon those passages of Scripture, the Lord did show me a few things, but it never was nothing that I felt like I could give birth to or and I said, Lord, you know, it's getting, it's getting later in the week, and I know God is always faithful. I've never stood and not had something. And God, that's just because of God. That's nothing to do with me. And early Saturday morning, and I don't know what time, but it was Saturday, the Lord woke me up and began to speak some things into my spirit. And I said, but God, I, I really don't want to minister that. I, I, know, I know it's an issue, and I know it probably even exists in some I said, but it's really something that I'm not, a, I'm not a, afraid to address, but is it worth addressing? Would it make a difference if I address this issue? And I can assure you that it won't unless you let the Spirit of God deal with your heart. And I wrestled with God yesterday morning, and I, I took a break from my study. And, and, and so I know this message is from God. Because about a week, let's say roughly a week or so, I got my Sam's Club little magazine for their upcoming sales. And I didn't even open it. As a matter of fact, it made it from one vehicle to another vehicle, and I don't really know how that happened. I know I did it, but I just don't recall doing it. And I, as I got out of the vehicle that I hardly ever drive, I laid it from the sun visor, and I laid it on the toolbox. And I was going to look at it later. And so it laid there, and yesterday morning, which we hardly ever check our mail in our mailbox by the road, so I knew it was full because I put mail to go out on Friday, and it was full Friday morning, so I thought it was probably really full by now. So I'll go down to get the mail. I'm going somewhere. Just hang with me. So I'll go and get my mail. As I'm coming back up the driveway, I thought, oh, I should get that Sam's Club magazine and look at it. Now remember, I'm taking a break from my study, the very thing that I'm studying on. And I opened up that 
magazine, and I'm, I'm looking through the sales, and I thought, oh, yeah, those, those cameras would be nice. We need some of those. And all of a sudden, I go to a page, and there's an olive oil advertisement. And it, the olive oil is not what confirmed the message, but what the ad said. And that was dealing with the issue of racism. Now listen, I'm just going to be very clear with you today. And the reason I think that we need to discuss this is because our young people, especially, and many adults have been pulled in and, and sucked in to the wrong theology about racism. Does racism exist? Yes. Does it exist within the body of Christ? I didn't think I'd get many amens. Yes, it does. But it ought not be. And so our young people, and, and this was kind of been stirring in me for longer than I realized it, as I meditated on, on this and I went back to conversations that I've had with people, uh, especially of late because if you turn on the news or if you go through your Facebook feed or whatever uh, social media that you find, you, you hear things like uh, a critical race theory. Which critical race there is, we're going to stop out, stamp out, do away with racism if we change laws, if we, if we write better laws. And I'm going to tell you right now, laws won't stop racism. Biden won't stop racism because it's not an issue of laws and policy. It's an issue of the heart. And, 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 and many of you, like me, I've lived in this same county. Almost 52 years. Much of the racism that we have, let's just be real, straighten your halos up this morning. We were taught. I know all racism's taught. But we, we say things like this, well, I'm not racist, but I wouldn't want my son or, or my daughter. You, that's racism. Because you've already prejudged somebody. But... By the skin. See what? Let's go back. I got to get back to the scripture because that's that's all I can hang with. God made man in His own image, in His own likeness. Come on now. And I got news for you this morning. When when God took on flesh, uh, He didn't take on white flesh. Uh, he didn't take on black flesh. Uh, Jesus fled. God fled to a Jewish body. There's. And, 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 and why am I saying this? Because I want you to know, segregation, we've come a long way. I service a church in Horse Cave. And it started in the, like, the, the, like the 1930s. This church was established. And they've got a copy of their deeds. So neat, it's handwritten deeds. Awesome. But on the deed, they've got it framed. And it says, uh, Horse Cave Colored Church. Now we would say Horse Cave... Or we'd say Horse Cape Baptist Church, and you know we're the black the black church. We go we we don't refer to Mount Vernon back here. We refer to it as the black church. By we was asked one time was I was this becoming an Hispanic church? That's racism. I don't. I, you can you can straighten your halos all you want. You you can say whatever you want, but. It's in there, folks, and we do very well to address it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, God made one race, the human race. Whether you're Asian, African, Caucasian, black, Hispanic, Australian, just keep throwing them out. It doesn't matter. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And I, I tell you right now, it's 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 infiltrated because we, so now now we 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 had those that fought for for uh, equality and, and and civil rights and and now now people that were once oppressed and pushed back and had to sit in the back of the bus and couldn't use certain water fountains. But I want you to know today, even though they got to say could go the same places, those that were segregated, but on Sunday morning. It's still the most segregated day of the week. Church is the most segregated place on planet earth. Oh, you better help me this morning. Go 
Why is that? We, we can make all kinds of excuses of why that is. And, but the bottom line is, it's because we've took note. We've took a mental ascent of somebody's skin color. Oh, okay, I, I, I knew it was going to be a tough road to tell this one. I, I, I knew that going into this. You and I, and no matter the, the, the you know, I, that's, that's bad. You, you've got to put all this junk on the application of, okay, we just put down we're male or female. What's the rest of it matter? Because they want to keep it ever before us. Listen, there's an agenda in America to keep us divided. Keep the pot stirred. And our young people are being indoctrinated with this. Defunding the police ain't going to stop out racism. The Equality Act ain't going to stop out racism. And it just ain't skin color. You, some people got racism against different... Now listen, Jesus is the only way to heaven. Some people got racism or prejudice against people of uh, what they refer to as alternative lifestyles. Listen, homosexuality is a sin. So is adultery and fornication and drunkenness and idolatry and uncleanness and lasciviousness and all those things mentioned in the Scripture. But we can't have prejudice against them because we're called to love. How cool is it? That you and I are made in the likeness and the image of God. And if, and if you've been here very long, you know we, we've gone into that much detail of what that really means. That we're made in the likeness and the image of God. But God made man from the dirt of the earth. Yeah. Amen. And, and I've noticed uh, if you've done a lot of digging, there's all different colors of dirt. But it's still planet earth. Can you say Amen. We are made in the image and likeness of God. And God so loved the world that he gave Jesus, his only begotten son, that whosoever, he didn't put a label of color. He didn't put a label of creed. He didn't label a continent. He said, I love the world. And if you will believe in my son, thou shalt be saved. Racism is nothing new. It's always been. Because man has hatred, and I know racism is taught, but I want you to know we're all born with an endemic nature. We're born with that. We are. Jesus said, "Your father, you of uh, you are of your father, the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning. So hatred is in you. If you've never been born again, it's there. Now, yes, it takes teaching." To be cultivated. To brought to the surface. We see it even through the scripture. The Jews. God's chosen people. And the Samaritan people. Were at constant odds with one another. Because. Of who they were. The Jews didn't like the Samaritans. The Samaritans liked the Jews. Because the Jews weren't Samaritans. The Samaritans weren't Jews. So therefore we don't have no fellowship with them. Wouldn't even keep company with them. Y'all not, not hear me this morning. The woman at the wells, that was her whole issue. You being a Jew, how is it that you speak to me, a Samaritan woman? Because she already knew that she was labeled and he was labeled. And we don't get along. We don't talk to either because we are different people. And I'm going to tell you right now, folks, there's people that's already got you and I labeled. But they found common ground. The woman realized that she was thirsty, but she didn't know what she was thirsty for. And Jesus said, I'm a living water. And if you drink from this 
well right here, if you keep drinking from earthly things and earthly and tangible things, you're going to stay thirsty. But if you drink of the water that I have and that I will give you, you'll never thirst again. Now listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I used to I used to be racist. Now not like what you would say. I wasn't wearing a white sheet, no white hood. I wasn't a, no, a member of the Aryan nation and all that. Straighten your halos up. And if some of you are, and some of you are right now. But, I, you know, I mean, some of my best friends, my best friend through school was a black guy. I mean, we was thick as thieves. But later in life, I began to develop a, 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 a prejudice, a, even a hatred, if you will, for the Hispanic people. Now look at it. Now look at me. Be careful. Be careful. But I'm going to tell you something. When the love of God comes in, he'll push all that out. He'll remove all that away. But see, our, 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 our kids are being taught that maybe you should feel less than or not equal as. And, and, and because of the past, look at here, I can't change what happened. I, I can't even change what I did wrong back in the past, let alone what somebody else did. But we live now because now faith is. We start today. And my God, you the love of God, you need to release it. And if there's racism, even a small smidgen amount of racism in your your heart you got to get it out because it has no place in the heart of someone who would dare call themselves a Christian Ephesians in 2 14 it says for he himself is our peace who hath made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one baptism. He is Lord of all and in all. Jesus died for everyone. As there as he laid upon that cross, as he was dying, he said, Father, forgive them. Who's them? Who, whoever. Them is them. It's not y'all and us and they. It's all. And if you and I, God is not biased, he's, a, he, he's, he's not impartial. It's whosoever will, let them come unto him. And if you and I are going to be Christians, we're going to have to learn to love one another. And I can tell you right now, in your own strength, you can't love everyone. But through God, you can. See, love is not something, it's a somebody. And that somebody is Jesus. You know, I was listening to the radio a few years ago. The story, actually, the story made pretty, pretty uh, big news. And this was, actually, it was a church here in Kentucky. And I don't remember exactly where. Somewhere uh, in the mountains, I believe, thereabouts. Very traditional church. And a young lady there started dating, she was a, a white lady. A young lady started dating a black man. She brought him to church. The church split. Some was against it and some was okay with it. Don't tell me racism don't exist in the house of God. I've, I know firsthand myself, I don't have to hear a story on the radio. I was doing some work for a, a, ch a church that was building a new, new, new facility, beautiful church. And I was there working, and I, I assume it was one of the deacons or elders came by and just to see the progress of the, the building. And he began to talk to me. And they had another church just up the street where they, where they were. I said, what are y'all going to do with that, with that building? Just making conversation. And this was his immediate response. Remember, this, this man would tell you he's a Christian. And I'm not saying he's not saved, but I can tell you he's not Christ-like. Here's what his response to me. We have to, the lawyer said we have to use it one time a year to keep it open. Because, the, because it's in the deed, it was, the, this place was willed to them. Will to this church. And in the will it says, if it's no longer a church, it goes back to the living heirs. And this is, and that, 
includes a brother and sister, the only two living heirs left. And they, there's no way we can give it to them. And I was thinking, I wonder why that is. But I didn't have to ask because he told me. He said, because the sister, there was a, a boy and a girl, brother and sister, left. The son, uh, the, the, the male is a homosexual. And the daughter is married to a black man. And we can't let them have it. He had to make a distinction who she was married to. Based on his skin color. And you know, this is actually preached from many pulpits. That it's okay. That we should be separate. That, you know, they take, you don't mix seed together. I ain't talking about farming today. I'm talking about the human race. Well, you know, birds, I ain't talking about birds. I'm, I'm talking about mankind. Jesus in Matthew 25, and I'm not going to read the whole passage for time's sake, and most of you are familiar with him. Jesus sees two types of people, sheep and goats. And one day he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And he's going to say to the sheep, Blessed, enter into the rest that's been prepared for you because, because, listen to what Jesus said, because when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you come and visited me. And the sheep will say, Lord, when, we, when did we see you like that? And Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you've done to me. And then he's going to say to the goats, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and you didn't visit me. I was in prison and you didn't come unto me. And they said, when did we ever see you like that? And Jesus said, what have you done to the least of these? Or what have you did not do to the least of these you've done unto Jesus? So I'm going to tell you something this morning. If you've turned up your nose, if you looked about somebody different based on who they are and their skin color, you did that unto Jesus. And shame on us. When you walk down the street and you see somebody of a, maybe a different group, maybe skin color, and you move out of fear because you've already got a prejudged notion of what they might be and what they might do, that, my friend, is fear and racism walking hand in hand. And you did that unto Jesus. See, God don't have favorites. And yes, it does exist. And people of the world are gonna they're gonna have hatred. They're gonna be prejudiced. They're gonna have racism. But I'm talking to the household of faith this morning. It should not exist. And as I said, even if it's a little hint, it should not exist. God is no respecter of persons. That's what Peter found out in Acts chapter 10. Peter was trying to be a good Jewish boy. And he was praying. And he saw this sheep come down with all manner of beasts. And, and the Lord said, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. And he said, No, not so, Lord. Nothing, nothing unclean or uncommon has ever touched my lips. And this happened three times. And the Lord says, Never call what I've cleansed uncommon or unclean. And now he ends up in the house of Cornelius. That's what this whole dream was about. That's what this whole trance was about. Was he was going to the house of Cornelius. A house full of Gentiles. That he wasn't even supposed to step foot in. Or at least that's what he believed. And there as he was preaching. He said I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Why? Because they received Jesus. And they received the Holy Ghost. That racism, that prejudice that he had was removed. Romans 2.11 says, 
for there, there is no respect of persons with God. Ephesians 6 tells us, neither is there respect of persons with God. And James really gets right down to it. James 2 and 4, and then 8 and 9, he says, Are you not partial in yourselves? Are you become judges of evil thoughts? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin. I didn't, I'm not making this up. You're going to read it yourself. James 2, 8 and 9. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and you are convinced of the law as transgressor. Every form of racism or discrimination, whether it be small or it be on a large scale, is sin before God. And you might be a victim of racism. You might be a victim of being prejudged. All I would say to you this morning is, you forgot, you have to. You have to forgive those that have wronged you, that have hurt you, that have... You say, well, it's hard to forgive. Jesus said, when you stand and pray, forgive. For if you forgive not... Neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. You might have been done wrong. You may be hurt. You may be crushed. You may be pushed aside. You may be belittled. And listen, it just don't go to skin color. Maybe we sometimes we look at people because maybe they're too short. They're too tall. They're too fat. Too skinny. Young people, you need to listen to me this morning. Don't ever get caught up in that mess at school. It's easy to get sucked into. It's easy to get pulled into it. Putting this somebody down. Maybe because they smell funny. Maybe because they don't have the clothes you got. You are a racist. Well, I got one, amen. It was faint. You are prejudging somebody on an outward experience or outward appearance. God looks at the heart. You might be that kid that's being belittled, puts pushed aside. You don't think much about it now. When you're the one doing the pushing away. And I can tell you when you get my age. You'll look back and think how stupid, how childish, how devilish, how evil. You, you'll look back and you'll wonder, listen, because I used to be one of those. You'll wonder, how did that affect them as an adult? Was I ever able to ever overcome it? Because you don't know what it's like at home for them. I'm talking to you young people. You don't know what goes home. You don't know what goes on in home when that child gets home from school. You don't know what kind of hell hole they may be entering. They may have it all together. They may have the clothes you wish you had. And still could be entering into a mess when they get home. If you dare, young people, you dare call yourself a Christian, then you have one option, that is to love them. And I challenge you, do like Jesus. Go find the least of these. He went out, I got to go back to the woman at Samaria. He went plumb out of his way. He, he went, I mean, he went out of the way, made an effort. He said, I must needs go through Samaria. You find the one that nobody else wants to do nothing, have nothing to do with. You find that one. You befriend them. Father, forgive them.
Now, I, no, please don't misunderstand me. If, if, you, are, if you are being bullied, that, that's a term that is, we hear all the time now. And because of bullying, because young people can't get away from it, used to when I, was, when I was in school, when you got bullied, it happened while you was at school. At least you had time to go home and, 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 and you know, think about you know, what the next day. But now it's nonstop. Because these kids have these devices in their hand. They're constantly being bullied and harassed and belittled and put down. And that's why teen suicide and even preteen is on the high, as high as it's ever, ever been. But if you are being harassed or bullied, I'm not saying you take it. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I am saying you have to forgive them. But if you are being abused, bullied, harassed, you need to talk to someone. Young person, talk to your parents. If you're an adult, talk to another adult. Because adults get abused too. You must allow God to heal your heart. You must allow God to heal your heart. And in closing this morning, if there is racism in your heart, I only have one word for you this morning, and that's repent. Just simply repent. Repent is just not feeling bad, but now, okay, well, yeah, maybe I, I, I guess I am. I, maybe I do got some work on. It's not, it's, it's not just necessarily feeling bad or, or saying, okay, yeah, that's me. I, I've got this problem. But repenting is changing your mindset about it. It's allowing Holy Ghost to tweak your heart. Allowing him to come in and remove all that junk that's been put in there year after years of being told, well, and, and, and the, the, all the stuff we've heard. Listen, I've heard it as a kid. I heard it all growing up. Just little hints of racism. Little things that ingrained in our heart and in our mind. Is that you today? Is that you today? The worship team wants to come. I'm done. As they come, I'm going to read one verse. Romans 6 and 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Today, what are you yielding your members to?